wish that was me. Did you uh, restart it already? Yes, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. I came on just to speak and I somehow pushed the end button instead of uh, leaving, so. Sorry, everybody, we'll be right back on in just a second. Moish, you're, you're on. You're on. I made you the host. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, I got it. Ah. ah. Okay, sorry about that. Let me, <laughs> okay. All right, sorry I lost you there. Go back here, let me pull it up again. Where are we? All right, sorry. Um, let me just open up all the, uh, the chats and buttons going on here. Okay. How are we doing? Okay, the, the name of the theme is called electric, just by the way. Okay, so I'll just continue where I left off. And uh, hopefully, I hope you guys are all caught up. If not, you could see where I'm at. Okay, so we were in the middle of talking about water sense. Excuse me. We're talking about water sense certified shower heads. Um, we finished typing that. Then we're gonna press enter and we're going to indent. I press tab. I like that, it's a quicker way to do it. Press tab, gives me another indent. And I'm going to type family can save, family can save 2,700 gallons of water yearly. It's not a bad deal. All right, then I will delete the third bullet and retype. And the next slide is hot water pipe insulation. What do I do? Hot water pipe insulation. Yeah, it's not gonna, doesn't know what to do with that word. Insulation, okay. And we're gonna, one more. Yeah, one more tab there, and here we're gonna add, can raise temperature two to four degrees. Can raise temp temperature. <laughs> temp you sure temperature. Yeah, welcome to English, temperature. Can raise temperature two to four degrees. Okay, not digress, degrees. Okay, so that finishes the text for this page. Okay, so now we're going to add a few more things. So if you remember, we learned a little bit about symbols and last time we, last time the symbols we used was just a, a bullet. Now, there are two words on here that are actually registered trademarks, which is especially relevant. Let's say, you know, you want to give a presentation and you want to mention the trend of Apple or the trend of, uh, 
uh, Google. These are all registered trademarks. So you want to establish that these are, you're referring to a company. So you would want to insert a regist registered insert, which they have. So I'm gonna go to insert. If you remember where it is, you could go there. We're gonna insert a symbol. Where is it? Not an object. Sorry, I pressed the wrong one. <laughs> oh, what's it doing? Oh, are you kidding me? All right. Insert a symbol. Oh, and by the way, I wasn't paying attention. So now, if I were to insert, insert the symbol now, it would end up by degrees. I don't want it there. I want it here. I want to buy Energy Star. That is a registered trademark, and I want to enter the the registered mark there. So I put my my cursor by the star button. So when I click insert over here, it will automatically be inserted at that point. Now, I already selected it because that was the last thing I used while I was setting this up. But for those you could scroll through, I know there's a lot, but the character code is 00AE. So if you were to type 00AE here, zero so let's say i'll click on a random one here okay now i know it's zero zero a e zero zero capital a capital e and boom automatically it will find your registered symbol okay so i'm going to click on that um or that doesn't matter this is just our, my recently used symbols so just quicker access and i'm going to select insert Oh, I must answer. I was just, I couldn't see it. So I, I was blocking the screen. Um, so there you go. That's really cool. Now I want to copy and paste this because I want to enter it also by water sense. So I'm going to control C. going to go right by water sense, control V. And there I have my symbol inserted in two areas of this document. <clears throat> Okay, now we are going to play around with a link. Now we kind of touched upon it. Um, so, I'm not sure why, so I mentioned that uh, they put, it's a little shaded, I'm not sure. I mean, if it is, I can't tell anyway. Um, so I, I don't know why it would be a different design than uh, what is already available, what I have here. Okay, so we are going to insert a hyperlink into the cover here. So hyperlinks are extremely helpful, especially with PowerPoint presentations when you're giving them and you're displaying them in front of a crowd. So it's all digital, it's a digital document. And let's say you wanna reference or, or refer to a website or refer to a journey um, that is connected to that presentation. So you wanna enter a hyperlink that will take you directly to that web page without typing it in. And anyone you share that PowerPoint with will be able to access that page especially if it's like a really long website or sometimes, you know, they give, they give these, uh, you'll, get a, you'll get a PowerPoint presentation or this presentation and then at the end we'll have a survey. So if you ever take a look at the survey link, it's like a thousand characters. So you, can, you ask someone to type that in, no one's gonna give you a survey. But if you hyperlink it, then I'm sure you'll have a much bigger turnout with surveys. So let's go ahead and highlight that. Okay, so we highlighted our energy efficient products and now we're going to go to insert again and we're going to click on the link. Okay, so the link is right there at a hyperlink. So the shortcut is control K, but we're just going to go click on the link. So the text to display is energy efficient products. Now, what we want to do is we want to, so 
right now what's selected is existing file or web page. That's where I want to keep it because there are other options, obviously. There's email address, there's create new document, there's place in this document. But what I want is just the existing file or a web page. So how does it know it's a web page? I'm going to type out a web page. Now the web page we're going to type, and I already checked, it's not it's an obsolete website. It doesn't it doesn't work, but www.energysaver.gov. Energy saver. Ener energysaver.gov okay so it obviously defaulted for me because I had already entered it before so it, it has a bunch of different uh, um, addresses that I had used in the past so energysaver.gov I press OK and notice the text to display is energy efficient products I click OK and now if you notice that now changed colors which is an indication that um, it has now a link now, if I just want to click on that link, I do control and click on it. Now that would open the web page, but cannot locate the internet server or proxy server. It's because it does not exist, the page. But now that is linked to that website. So if you have a functional website, you're welcome to put whatever website you want over there. But that is how you create a hyperlink. Okay, let me take five minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions, if anyone wants to just catch up a little bit and, um, okay, Chaim, see Chaim Lamb is raising his hand. If you can, if you have a question, um, just go ahead and enter it in Q and A, please. So then I will be able to answer it. Oh, sorry. Chai Alam. Sorry. Um, Okay, why is insert? Okay, so Jack. Okay, let me see. How do you realign the first slides? Okay, so I'll just go on. So here, um, I'm just going to the first slides. If you notice, you go back to home and you have your options here. So you have the center, you have the left alignment, center alignment, uh, boxed alignment, or Right alignment, you just click on the right alignment. So you would just click on the right alignment here and then you'll have it aligned where you need it to go. Okay, so anonymous, uh, you got the theme for the first slide, but it won't come up in the same theme. Um, again, I, I'm not sure what you are looking at. Um, I, I don't know if it was maybe already there. I'm not sure what the answer is, but my best suggestion, because I think other people are also maybe using other themes, it just don't worry about the coloring. What's more important is the functions that we're doing. Okay, so whatever theme you have, just follow the directions here, because whatever theme you have, you'll be able to do everything exactly the way I'm doing it. So I think that's what's more important here. Okay, um, how do you copy and paste? Um, copy and paste this just like you would copy and paste any text. You just go ahead, highlight it, control C, and then control V where you want that to go. Okay, so Jack, again, I'm not sure why your symbol would be shaded. I don't know. Um, okay, uh, Zimmerman, you're using different slides, which I think I mentioned. That's fine. I think. Um, Okay, but I see later you're asking how do you get these slides? Again, um, if you go to file um, and if you just go to new and you just search in electric over here, um, mine's already coming up, but just type electric in the search engine search part here and it will pull up that theme that you are looking for. Okay, so electric, searching thousands, and there you have it. So double click on that and then it will give you the option to download and that will then populate in your PowerPoint. Okay, so hyperlinks. I'll show you one more time. I'm highlighting the text that I want to 
add a hyperlink to, okay? So make sure you're highlighting the text. It could be one word, it could be even literally one letter. So whatever you are highlighting, that is what's gonna be hyperlinked. But we're gonna hyperlink this entire line here. I go to insert because it's an insert function. I go to the link option, which is by links. Click on the links, and then here I have existing file and web page. I just type the web address that I want that link to direct. I type that in, I press OK, and then there you have it. It is now hyperlinked, and usually it will, um, it will have a little underlying default under it that will let you know that that is how, that it is hyperlinked, and if you hold over, um, if you hold over it, you'll see that it is hyperlinked. Um, Okay, so someone wants to know if you could change. Sure, you could change. You could change it to whatever color you want, and you could uh, the hyper the underline is default. You can't do anything about the underline. Ah. Um, but as far as the font color, yeah, go for it. You can change it whatever color that suits you. Okay, I think that wraps it up, and we will keep moving here. Excellent. Okay. Now, for all those who had fun with smart art, we are diving right back in. And we're gonna have a little fun with this too. We're gonna mix it up a little. Okay, so I'm back on slide number two and I have this box here. So I am going to go to the homepage, okay? Now, you see what's a little different than what we did before, because what we did before, if you remember, I'd go to insert and I'd insert smart art. But here's the thing, we already have text. So I don't want to insert smart art, I want to convert what I have into smart art, which is a different action, okay? So again, we're doing something different than what we've done in the past. Before we just select smart art and then we enter our information but I already have the text, I wanna convert it. So I'm gonna select and I highlight all this text, okay? Highlight that, it's gonna be all grayed out. And here's this little button, by paragraph, I'm gonna be in the home, right by paragraph, convert to smart art, okay? So now I have smart art, I'm gonna click on more smart art options and I'm going to go to the list gallery. Okay, what I want to select is list. So I'll select the list here. Okay, and the option I want is vertical box list. Okay, the vertical box list looks just like that on the side. Okay, now notice the colors. Now watch what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go to list. I'm going to select here vertical box list. I'm going to press OK. Now watch this. Oh, really? Boom, there we go. <laughs> Thought it quit on me. Okay, so isn't that cool? So not only did it convert it to word art, to smart art, but it also kept my theme. So it kept everything in line with my theme, which is really cool. And it kept the bullets, it knew what was a header, what was a sub point. And now I'm gonna add a little more to the shape. So what I want to do is now, remember it, once I have this selected, it now gives me a whole new design options here on top, okay? What I want to select, um, I'm going to select, one second. Ah. Uh, So I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to bold. There we go, okay? So I'm going to make it bold as well. So how do I, which is nice because even though when I start, okay, even though when I start typing, I can't, it's hard for me to select all of it because it looks at everything independently, but what it does allow me to do, it allow, when I'm, when I'm formatting, it's universal formatting. So I want to bold everything, or let's say unbold at this point. I don't know, it's a lot of information here apparently. 
Let's give it a second. I apologize. Okay, so if I unselect bold, it gets unbolded. If I select bold, everything comes bolded again. So I'm gonna bold that. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next slide. Okay. I will show that one more time. So I'm gonna undo it and I'll show it one more time. So please pay attention. Let me go back to, okay, I'm gonna do this again because I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna convert, convert to SmartArt Okay, that's this button here on the home page. More smart art. Okay, so now I'm gonna have all my smart arts available. I'm going to select the list, the list right here. Then after the list, I'm gonna select the vertical box list and I'm gonna press okay. And that will convert that into a smart art. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna press bold. That was there. If I click on the box now and click bold, everything gets bolded. Okay. I hope everyone's caught up. I see anonymous. Uh, I'm sorry I lost you there, but I, I hope you caught that that conversion there with the smart art conversion. And as you notice, once I've converted it to smart art, it doesn't allow me to convert it anymore because it's already converted. Now, if I wanted to obviously make changes, I would go back to the smart art and make those changes. But we're gonna move on to the next slide, okay? So now we're gonna go to slide number three. Okay, in slide number three, as you can see, there's already a smart art that has been set up. So we're gonna use this as a, as a uh, form here. Okay, so step one, title. What I'm gonna write in that place, I'm gonna write appliances. Appliances, okay. That's my step one, I now typed appliances. Now, in the step two title, I'm going to type windows. And in my step three title, I'm going to type lighting. Okay. So you have that appliance, windows, and lighting. Now, let me just take a look here. Okay. Design. Okay, so now what I'm gonna show you is a a cool way to enter text that's a little easier, especially when you have to navigate in all these funky different directions. And this is only three. Imagine you had like 20, 10 different shapes and then you spent the whole time going around and around and around um, to the, uh, through the presentation. So in order to get a simple way to access the, to access the text and manipulate it, there is a button here by design. You have create graphic, okay? So under the design, so I have to be selected on the word, the, the word art here. So I get my design and format. So sorry, the smart art. There's called a text pane. Okay, I'm gonna click on the text pane. Now, I, apparently I already closed it, but if you look here, This little arrow popped up and it will probably stick out in a second as soon as it loads. There we go. Okay. So now, there you have it. So now what this allows me to do, it allows me to change text in all these fields, but in a very clean manner. 
So when I start typing here, it will change exactly where that is located in the word art, in the smart art, okay? So I'm gonna go to appliances and notice as I click on the different sections of this text pane, it highlights those areas. So you could also see where you're gonna be typing. So I'm gonna select on the first, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna type unplug when not in use. See, now here's a classic one because I lost my bullet. What do I do? Just press enter and there you have it again. Now the next line I'm gonna type is ask about rebates. Ask about rebates. Now, as you notice, all the text is adjusting to the size, so it's universal. I, forgot to delete the text holder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. So I have unplug when not in use, ask about rebates. Now I'll move on to the next one. And this will be, um, this will have seal leaks. So S-E leaks. And then my next tab, I'll make sure to delete that. So now it's gone. Oh, I lost my tab. No problem. You press enter and there it is again. Close curtains at night in winter. Close curtains at night in winter. And then I will go to the last box there, the lighting box. I'm going to delete that. And I will type in buy LEDs. Okay, so here I'm gonna do a little different because what I wanna do actually, that should be a lowercase, there we go. What I wanna do is now I wanna indented tab. So like I did before, I press tab and check it out. Now it indents it a little bit. I'm gonna delete the text holder and I'm going to type use indoors and outdoors. Okay. So there you go. That finishes the text for this uh, option. Now, however, now we're gonna play around with this a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to the home tab. Okay. So I'm gonna close, if you're getting annoyed by this, you could always select the text pane and we'll close. But if you notice, there's this little arrow here that is always there by default, um, where it allows you to play around with that text, text pane, text pane. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna select, we're gonna select all these options. Cause if you notice here, there's a lot of different elements that are going on here. Oops, a lot of different elements, but I wanna select all of them, okay? So I'm going to select um, on the, go to home, okay? I'm gonna be selected on the out. I'm gonna click, slit, um, select on the home button. So I have here by editing options, I find, replace, and select, okay? I'm gonna click on the select button and I'm going to select all, okay? Now, look at that. That was a real lifesaver because there's so many elements here, again, that it would just be annoying to have to select each one. And there you have it, now it's selected everything. Now, I could go ahead and change two things. One, I wanna bold all the, all the lettering, so that bold. Then two, I wanna add a little shadow. Okay, a little style there. So I'm gonna click on the text shadow and there we have a little shallow shadow. And yeah, it's a little more 
noticeable by the black on the light blue, or if that's like a dark, dark blue, and then the white on the dark. Um, so again, what did I do? I selected the select all. If I select away, I lose everything. But if I go on my editing, I select all, and then I could manipulate commands. I want to do bold on everything, and then I want to give a little shadow. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change up the smart art. Okay, so I don't really like this style. It's not really in line with the theme that I'm going for. So I like the smart art, but I want something that's a little more in line with this presentation. Okay, so how do I do that? It's already there. So I go to design. Okay, now what I will do is I will go to back here. I have all my designs for smart art, just like it was before. Okay, and I believe the one that we are going to select, I'm going to go to more, more layouts and we are going to select target list. Okay, so we're gonna enter a different type of list. This is alternating flow list. I'm gonna go to the list option, okay? And I'm gonna select on the target list. You see this list here, okay? So again, I'm gonna go to the, to the design option by my smart, tool, smart Art Tools, which is only available when I select on my Smart Art uh, function. Then I go into designs, I select my options on my Smart Art graphic and I click Collect the list and I go to target list and I press OK. Boom. Check that out. I redesigned everything to fit that new smart art option. So it shifted the titles, shifted the bullet points, but it's a whole new design, which is very cool. Okay. So we'll press OK and we're going to leave that at that for the time being. And we are now going to give a better title to this page. And we are going to call it not title and content layout with smart art. That is <laughs> non sequitur. Nothing to do with this. We're going to go to tips to save energy. That's more in line. Tips to save energy. Okay. And I would recommend a control S for save. Otherwise, for those who um, otherwise, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Anyway, <laughs> just gonna keep moving. Um, okay. So again, for those who are wondering um, how to select everything, just go to uh, your editing by home, select all, and again, it will select all the options in that word art, and you could change it however you want. Okay, so just go ahead and just go ahead and select the editing option and just select all. That's how you get it to select all the smart art. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we're gonna add some new slides here. Okay, so we are going to select slide three, okay, which we're on already. And we're going to add a new slide. Okay, so go to a new slide, but I want to choose, I want to choose the title only slide. Okay, so you see here, we got a lot of different options here. Want the title only slide. Okay, so I'm going to select that. Okay, now what I want to do is, I want to duplicate that slide. Sorry, I chose the wrong one. It's not 
title only. I want title and content. So go ahead, delete that. Sorry about that. I want a new slide. I want title and content. Where is it? Title and content slide right here. Okay, so I have my title and content. Now, I like this title and I wanna go ahead and duplicate the slide, okay? So there's different ways to do this. Um, obviously, since there's nothing here, it may be easier just to do a new slide, but here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a slide, but we wanna duplicate the slide. So we'll just go ahead and select duplicate here. Now. Obviously that may come in more handy if you have a lot more detail or maybe you have a custom design that you wanna maintain, then that's how you would duplicate the previous slide. You just, again, you right click and then you have your options here, just duplicate slide and it's the exact same theme as your previous one. And for that matter, if you duplicate any slide, it literally duplicates it. So that's what it will do. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that. Okay. so. We have that same slide. Okay. I'm just taking a breath here because we're now going to So I'm going to we're now going to get into smart designs. Okay, let me take a minute here. I see there's a few questions about the smart art. Let me just go ahead and address that. Um, okay, Anonymous, I saw you were having some uh, trouble with uh, the smart art. Um, so as far as the layout I used for this, this is a bulleted list. Okay, if I go to design, and I, this is called a target list. Okay, that's the option I used for this smart art. Okay. And, uh, and as far as the select all, it looks like you got that. Okay. So no problem. Um, if you miss something, go ahead and ask me. And if I'm going a little fast, I'll just go back and address it, you know, with, trying to balance the, the two speeds because I know there's a lot of uh, new stuff going on here. So I'm trying to be aware of that. Now, okay, so Avi, you asked in the, the Zoom webinar chat, um, I, I'll just go ahead and uh, respond to you. So if you do not have this option of convert to smart art, it means, it probably means that the, art, the selection you've already have is already smart art. That's why if you notice here, this convert to smart art is grayed out because this is already smart art. If I come here, that convert to smart art is now available because this is not yet smart art. But once you've converted words to smart art, you no longer, you no longer need to convert it anymore because it's already smart art. And at that point, you have all the functions and features of a smart art tools and that's where you can manipulate and change things. Okay, I hope that, that answers your question and we will go ahead and move along here. Okay. Okay, row four. We are going to add, select on four and we, Select on four. Sorry. Okay, select on four. I said that already. Okay, so remember we had a bunch of options here. Now in the previous class, okay, for a second there, I th thought I lost the screen share, but it looks like we're still good. Okay, we're still good, okay. Um, 
So in the last class, we learned how to insert pictures directly. For this, we are going to insert a smart art. Okay, so we're going a little smart art crazy today. Now, we're gonna go to, so I don't know if you caught that, but again, I have my eight pre-configured boxes here along with my text and my bulleted list. So I'm gonna click on the smart art here, which goes directly to my smart art graphics. I'm going to select on the process Sorry, yeah, the process layout here. So now it has a bunch of different process styles, okay? And the one I'm going to select is the upward arrow, okay? So again, you wanna go into the process, select upward arrow, looks kinda like that, and I'm going to press okay. And that automatically fits perfectly into that square, okay? Now, I am going to select the, hold on a second, we're not, okay, we'll take a second before we play around with the formatting. Okay, so now we are going to type in text. Okay, so you're with me? So we have three boxes of text. So the first text I'm going to type is hourly pricing. Okay, then I'm gonna go to the second tap, text upward, and that I'm going to type peak time savings. Peak time savings. Then once again, I'm gonna go up one more and I'm going to type central AC. Okay, and those, oh sorry, central AC cycling, sorry. Now just keep in mind, do not press enter, do not space the words. The words will fit exactly in that square, they'll just go downward. So just type the line straight. Okay, so again, I have three hourly pricing, I have peak time savings and I have central AC cycling. And again, remember, if you prefer to type this way, you are more than welcome to. Okay, so now, I'm going to change the style a little bit. So here you have different styles. I'm gonna select this down and I'm going to select on the powder. Okay, so here we have 3D options. Okay, different, different styles here and here's like a, a live view of it. But what we're gonna select or what we're gonna select there is called the powder view. Okay, so it's a little faded. That is the selection that we're gonna make. Okay, and that wraps it up for this slide right now. Okay, now we're just gonna keep moving. Okay, so now we are going to slide number five. Okay. I'm just trying to think how to go about this. Okay, we're gonna go back to insert. And now we're gonna start inserting, inserting shapes, okay? Now, technically speaking, we could just clean up this. We're gonna clean up this slide, so remember, what we did previously was we duplicated that slide. Now, what we're gonna do is, I don't like this layout. I want it to just be blank, okay? So I'm gonna go to, to this um, home and I'm gonna see this layout here, okay? So there's two things going on. There's the new slide, right? And that gives me options to select a specific type of layout. And if I select on that, it's gonna add a slide. I don't wanna add a slide. I wanna change the layout of this current slide. So I'm just gonna click on the layout. And I had before the title and content, I wanna select the blank layout, okay? So now blank, totally blank. That's what I want. So again, I go to layout, I click on blank, and there I have my blank slide, just black. Or that's a really, really dark blue, midnight blue. I don't know what you would call that. 
Okay, now that we've got that clean, we are now gonna start inserting shapes. Now, I will, show, I will tell you exactly how to make the shapes. Initially, what I want from you is just to put the shapes on the board. So I don't care how big or small they are. It doesn't matter at this point. I just want you to put them on. So, sorry, let me show you how I got there. I'm at home and we have the drawing tools and here we have shapes, okay? Now, by the way, there's two ways to get there. There's the home, which has the drawing and then there's insert. So for intensive, for this function, I'm just gonna go ahead back to home and I'm going to go to the drawing and here I have all my shapes, okay? Now, the first shape that I'm going to select is the curved, um, the oval shape, okay? So I have basic shapes. Now, again, if you highlight, if you just hover over it, it will tell you the shape that it is. I'm gonna click on the oval shape. And now I have this cross here. That's letting me know where that shape is gonna start when I click on my mouse. So I'm gonna click on my mouse. And as you see, it's now moving. And I'm just going to uh, kind of like make a circle there. Okay, that's it. Right in the middle, don't worry how big it is. You could try to copy mine, um, but we'll get into the exact sizing shortly. Then what I want you to select is what's called a trapezoid shape. That would be this one right here, okay? It's got like a base. It's like a, uh, a triangle that lost its head. <laughs> That's the one way to describe it, okay? The trapezoid. So I'm going to put it on the right side of my circle my oval and I'm just gonna drag it out over there and there you have it. Then the next shape is called the curved down shape. Now if you notice um, each area is called you have lines, rectangles, basic shapes, block arrows, equation shapes, flow chart, stars and banners, call outs, action buttons. So that's important to just take note of because if you're looking where the arrows are just go ahead and look at block arrows and that's where you will locate that arrow. So again, we're choosing the curved down shape. So curved down, again, if you just highlight over it, there's my arrow I'm looking for, I click on that and I'm just gonna put this over here on this side here and notice all my, my rulers are casually, automatically measuring the the spacing between the shapes that are already on the page. So just like any picture or function, you could just go ahead and delete it. You know, let's say you, uh, you chose the wrong one. So you could just go back, select oval and just, shrink it back in and again these are shapes and if you notice they're already some come before it already has some default settings on it which we will play around with but that is our three shapes that we're playing with okay Okay, so now we're going to start shaping our, our sizes. Let me just get the exact sizes that they're asking for. Okay, so now we're gonna start playing around with this, the, the shapes here. So we got the oval here. This oval is going to measure three inches in diameter, okay? So one quick way to do it is just press three and then three here. So it's not really an oval, it's actually a circle. So again, how do you get that? Like what we've done in our Word presentation, you just go to, when you click on it, you get your formatting tools. On the last uh, far right, you have your sizing options. Just type three inches by three inches and that automatically sizes it. Now for my trapezoid, this I want to 
to be also three inches. So we're gonna hold on a second. I'm sorry. Why do I feel like Oh, that's what it's doing. Okay, so this one is gonna be, why did that happen? So the trapezoid is going to be four inches by three inches. So we're gonna go, you just type it in four by three. And actually our oval, our circle will be an overall size of four inches. So we'll just go ahead and size that out. Okay, now I want to drag this arrow kind of like running across here like that. Don't worry about, you know what, here, let me just slap everything towards the middle here. And there we go. Okay, a little bit towards the bottom. And again, we'll get the measuring right exactly shortly. But here, this is what you want to be looking at. Your arrow is kind of running off the page there. And the exact measurement for that arrow would be three inches high. So we almost got that exactly by 13.5. Oh, that was pretty good. 13.5. Okay. So we have the arrow is going to be running three inches high by 13 and a half inches wide. We have the circle that's, that is a diameter of four inches all around. And then we have the trapezoid, which is four inches tall and three inches wide. Okay. So now I'm just gonna select on the trapezoid. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to select all the buttons. Now remember what we did before. We go select and now select all, okay? So again, I, all I gotta do is select one option. All I gotta do is select one option and select all. And now I have it all selected. Now, as far, again, with the arrow, I'm just going, I'm just slapping back and forth here. Um, so I guess the arrow is the same manipulation. Once I click on it, I get all my moving corners again, like, like how to manipulate any shapes. And there I have it, I'm just moving it back and forth. And again, to get the exact height would be, oh, I kept it three inches high by 13.5 inches. And again, I am typing this in my format by size on the far right of format. I have control of how high and how wide any shape is. Okay, so I'm gonna go back home and I wanna select I wanna select all the items. So select all. Okay, so now all my items are selected and we're gonna change the style. So if I go to format and here I have my style right now, the current style that's selected is the light blue accent one. Okay, I'm gonna select um, drop down to give me more options and I'm going to select on the gradient fill light blue accent one, no outline, okay? So that's in the blue. So we're gonna keep the blue theme, but I wanna give a little more fade effect, okay? So I'm gonna click on that, and then all my shapes now are the same color as that theme, okay? So now I'm looking at a unified color between. I'm just gonna click away, and I have all, I've unselected all the buttons. So now 
what I want to do is I want to have two of these shapes, okay? So I don't want to do all that work again of sizing and changing the color and selecting. I just want it exactly that, is, that way that is. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy. So I'm going to go home here, by the way. And here's your copy options. But so control C is copy, but here you do copy. And then I'm just gonna select away from that. I'm gonna click on paste. And there you have it. I have two identical shapes, same style, same coloring, same size. Okay, so now I have that trapezoid that's been duplicated. Now we're gonna start typing. Okay. So I'm going to select on the left trapezoid, the one I just duplicated, and I'm going to start typing. Now, you don't see a cursor, but it's defaulted for text. So when I click away, all I got to do is start text typing, and it will come up. So the first, or the first trapezoid I'm going to type remembers your preferred temperatures remembers your preferred temperatures. Wow, my spelling is not doing too good today. Let's, remembers temperatures, okay? Now I am going to select on the oval or circle, turns itself up or down, turns, itself up or down. Then I'm going to select on the right one and I will go ahead and type can be controlled, can be controlled from anywhere using phone, tablet, or laptop okay so now what i want to do is i want to select only those three objects okay before the selecting tool i could do select all or if i select on one and i select all now everything's selected i don't want everything selected i just want these three objects which i typed in selected so in order to do that I am going to select one shape. I'm gonna hold the shift button down. And while holding the shift button down, I get to select all three at the same time. So that gives me more control over what I wanna select. And if I click on it, then it disappears, it unselects. So now when I have the shift button held down and select on the shapes, every item that I select now becomes a, comes selected. So now that we have all of them selected, we're going to change up the text, the format, okay? So first, we're going to raise the font to 20. So just go ahead and raise that, all of them went up. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a little shadow to the text. So that's this button right here, text shadow. There, it, you see it raised it up, it gives it a little bit of an outline. Then I'm going to make it bold. So that's that button here. Then I'm going to change the font to a dark blue. OK, so the that's a black. I want a blue. Oh, here, this is this one. No. Dark blue right here. This is my dark blue. What? This is awesome. It looks blue to me or whatever. Okay, so dark blue, that's the one I select. Click on select, and there you have it. They're all highlighted, shadowed, and um, bolded. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and change the color of the arrow. So 
before we did them all the same design, but now I want to change the color of the arrow. Okay, so I'm going to click on the arrow. So now the arrow is the only one highlighted. I can tell by the box around it. And so the shape fill is right here. So when I select on this, I get, I'm in my, I'm in my, I could, again, I have access to both in the home. I have some limited drawing options, but if I go to my format, I have a lot more coloring options. I'm going to rather go to the format because this is a drawing tool and we're focused on the drawing. So I'm going to go to the shape fill and I'm going to click on green. Okay. Select green accent two. And there my cut, my arrow is now green. Okay. So I hope everyone's with me. Um, I'm gonna do a few more movements and then we'll call it a day. We'll call it a night. So first we'll go ahead and now we're going to go, we're gonna use the guides and to help us move things in a, in a uh, organized and clear way. So I can see exactly symmetrically where everything is. So I'm gonna add the guides. Now the guides, I'll show you how to work in a second. And then I have my grid lines also, okay? So my grid lines break out the page evenly. I believe it's a one inch square. And the guides, they break the page up exactly in the middle. And then this also allows me to measure things exactly to where I want it to go. So, again, this is also the ruler. If you didn't have the ruler beforehand, make sure your ruler is selected as well. So you have your, your measurements on top and on the, on the top and on the left side of your presentation. So you could easily measure things as we go along. So, I'm going to add the grid lines as well. Now, I have my, here is my, if you notice, there's this little, did you see that? By the guides, if you hover over the guide, okay? So if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the guide a little more, prominent over here, because when I'm zoomed in at 100, it's a little less prominent, but here you can see this line. So if you, I hover over it, you'll notice that it gives me a little funny looking um, arrow that kind of is like split in the middle, okay? I'm gonna drag this over exactly at the five inch point, okay? And then I'm gonna take my perpendicular line, I believe that's perpendicular, and bring it down to the three inch point, okay? That, so I, I'm, I'm gonna be at the five by three. And actually, if I get rid of the grid lines, you'll be able to see it much easier, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna move this shape exactly to the corner, okay? Right there, exactly to that point. Now I'll even zoom in a little bit. Ah, it's a little too much. Okay, so there. Okay, so that is exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so I want it by the five inch, by the three inch. Okay, then
I want to take an off, so I'm going to zoom out. That's much better. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the two inch vertical. Make sure that, oh, here it is. Okay, so you see that's exactly there. And I wanna move the, I wanna move my oval to be exactly right at that point by the, by the two inch and by the three inch vertical here, okay? That is exactly where I want it to be. Now, I wanna move my vertical again. And I'm gonna move it over to the two inches to the right. Okay, and that's exactly where I want my uh, circle. Is smack in the middle there, two um, at the point three from the bottom and exactly right in the middle of the two, the two, the two inches to the left, two inches to the right. Okay, then I'm going to do the same for my trapezoid over here. So I'm gonna take the measurement, I'm going to move it to my five, just like remember here, I did it to my five, I wanna do a five inches here, and I'm gonna bring this down so it's exactly right there and then everything is exactly where it should be okay so now what I want to do is I want to move all these shapes I wanna move these shapes in unison. I want them now to be exactly spaced. So how do I make sure that they're communicating, so to speak, with each other so that they work in unison with each other? So I'm going to the format page. I'm going to select one. I'm gonna do all the selections. So I'm gonna select one, I'm gonna shift, select one, and then two, so three, sorry. So now I have all three shaped, shapes selected. Now. I want them to be exactly even from each other. So I'm gonna go to align, now watch. So now I have them all um, selected. Now what I want them to do is I want them to align evenly throughout the slide, okay? So I have a line to slide. So now they're exactly aligned with the slide, but what are we gonna do there? We are going to distribute them horizontally. Okay, so now they're gonna be exactly distance throughout the slide. So again, if I change the size of the slide, they will adjust to the size of the slide. So I'm going to select on a line and distribute horizontally, and there you go. So now that is exactly equally broken up along the entire slide. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is, sorry, I shouldn't have uh, unselected that. What I'd like to do now is I wanna go ahead and move this towards the middle. So now I want it in the middle. So I want to align and align middle. Just click on middle and boom, there it is exactly aligned in the middle. And I think we'll leave it at that. Let's, you know what, let's, let's play one more. Let's do one more um, flip here. Okay, so now I'm going to drag the arrow up and what I want it to do is I want it to be exactly aligned to the middle. You see where my points of the line are?
Okay. So it is exactly in the middle and that's where I want it. Now, what I want to do is I want to flip it. So I know we've learned this skill before, but we're just going to go ahead and go to format. Now, I, I obviously want to rotate it evenly. I don't want to play around with it. I want it to stay exactly the same. I just want to flip it upside down. So I want to flip it horizontal, no, vertically. There, I want to flip it vertically. Click, flip vertically. And there you have it. Now, my problem is that it got it right over here. These shapes are in front of this arrow, but I want it to be behind this shape too. So what do I do? I click on this again. And here I have my movement options, okay? So I have this arrangement pane here that gives me a bunch of different options on what, where to put or how to shape this object. So what I wanna do is I send backwards and I don't just wanna send it backwards. And the difference is, is that sending, send backwards, let's say you have a layered page. So you have like four or five different graphics or any, or text boxes, or objects, whatever it is, you have layered objects. So if you do send backward, all it does, it just goes behind the next one behind it. So if you have four, um, so you'll, and it's up in front, so if you, set, if you send backwards, it will only go behind the second one. But I want this to go all the way in the back. So I just press send to back and boom, it is now behind all the objects on this page. And that we will finish off with one more tool. So now what we're gonna do is, is we are going, now we could select all of them. So, Yeah, it's just a, okay. So again, like I showed you before, I wanna select all my, so select, select all. Now, what I wanna do is I worked really hard to get this in the right spot. Everything is exactly where I want it to be. So how do I keep it that way? Symmetrically that everything stays like that. So what I do is I wanna create this into a group. So now, it doesn't look at the each object independently and now looks at it as a group of objects. So if I move one object, everything moves together. So in order to do that, I have to select all the items. And if you notice by the formatting tool, right here, there is an option by arrange. There's an option called group. Okay, so I haven't grouped anything yet. So the only option available to me is group. What group will do is when I select group now, Look, it looks at it as one picture. So everything I move, it's it just became one picture. Check that out. So wherever I move this, it does not look at it as independent shapes when I select it as a whole. Now, yes, I do have access to each independent point, but it looks at it as one object that I could just move around. Let me get that, there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, that's right in the middle. Okay. So I would save that. And I would say that's a wrap. It's 9.43. Um, I know we, we did a lot this class. A lot of, uh, I'd say, I, I wouldn't say new things, but a lot of more advanced things than what we've done in the past. So I hope everyone was able to stay along. Again, we will be emailing this probably out within the next 24 hours. And now I am available for questions. Um, okay, um, okay. So let me just go through the questions here. All right, Jacob, how do you select the shape? So again, just select any shape. All you gotta do is just click on it. If you wanna select multiple shapes, um, 
you hold the shift button and that will allow you to select wherever you select that will give you that will allow you to select so here even though this i group together if i hold if i select one shape and then hold the shift button that will give me the ability to select multiple shapes okay um, anonymous you want to know how to get the individual grid lines okay so if i go to view now view i have show okay under show i have a ruler and I believe also someone else asked, okay, Jacob, you asked how to get a ruler as well. So here in my view options, I have these options. I have a ruler option. I have the grid lines, okay? And I have my guides, okay? The guide, what the guide allows you to do is it allows you to move exactly, if you want something to be at a very specific point, um, on the page, this allows you to manipulate that. That's not limited to grid lines because grid lines is all equal. So grid lines not, might not be exactly what you, excuse me, might not be exactly what you're looking for. So the guides are, give you even more detail and precision on where you wanna move a specific graphic exactly on the page. Hope that answers that question. Okay, sorry, uh, Dennis and Kathy, I, your, I guess your question is about off the visual, visual page. I'm not sure if you still have that question. Um, if you still have it, by all means. Okay, so, so Avi, I see you're chatting. Please, if you can, just remember to... Uh, If you could go in the Q and A, if you want me to answer the question, just go ahead and type in the Q and A, not in the Zoom webinar chat. Okay. Okay, thank you, Avi. And then uh, Paul, I'll get to your question next. Okay, how do you switch the arrow? Okay, so now, all right, it's gonna be easier if I'm just gonna ungroup it, ungroup. Okay, so now when I select on the object, or any object, I have always the rotation option. And that rotation option is by home, by shape effects, no, oh, I thought. I thought I had it here. Anyway, so it's by your format. Format, again, whenever you select on any type of object, your drawing tools always pop up with your more enhanced formatting options and drawing tools and everything inside. So if I wanna rotate without dragging and making sure that it maintains the size, it maintains the shape, it maintains everything about the shape, I just wanna move it. I click on the rotation and then I just select how I wanna move it. So I wanna do a rotate 90, rotate 90, flip vertically, flip horizontally, um, that's exactly how I get it. Now you could get even more specific. When I go to more rotation, you could literally do it to the point. Like you could do point one, point two, exactly to the there we go. So I want it at zero, completely flat. So I hope that answers your question. I'm happy anonymous I answered your grid lines question. Okay, how to place the arrow behind? Okay, Paul, how to place the arrow behind all? Okay, so with any object that you select, you could control where it's located on your page. And what I mean by located, I mean each object, it looks, the, the program looks at each object separately. So it needs to know where to put it on the page. So by default, you could have it before or after. So let's say these are your options to where you'd like your shape. So I can bring it forward, bring it to the front, and now I have the arrow totally in front of my other objects. So whatever objects were there, I now brought my green arrow all the way to the front. Now let's say I wanna move it backwards. And like I mentioned before, if I send backward, it will do 
one object at a time. So it didn't do all of them, it just did these two. But it still didn't do this one. So a quick way, so let me just bring it to the front. A quick way to get it to the back, because you know for sure that you want it in the back, is just sent it back, and then now it is behind all the other objects. Hope I answered your question. So I, 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 I'm sorry, Anonymous, it, it, it looks like I, I was a little fast for you today. I apologize. I'm sorry that uh, I wasn't at a pace that you were able to keep up. Um, but uh, I, I believe I covered most of your questions. Okay. Okay, I will stay a little longer here, but uh, you're all welcome to head out. Um, again, our next class will be on Wednesday, Wednesday evening, where we will continue to advance on our picture and graphic options and creating a lot more flair on this um, presentation. Okay. So, Anonymous, you have a question about there's a format painter and there is a format painter. Right here, you have the format painter um, and you could use it in many different ways. Um, I'm not sure how you want to use it, but you have this format painter here in the home, right under home by clipboard options, you have that format paper, painter. Okay, now Mr. question questions, each time you try to resize new shapes get created instead. I'm not sure, let me try that for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm So I, I'm not sure why that would happen unless maybe you hit on the selection tool before you, instead of m maneuvering it around and maybe that's why it created more. I guess that's all I could think of right now. Okay, Jack. Um, okay, that, that is actually a good idea to send out that theme. But um, I mean, I definitely could send it out, but it looks like also that you were able to find it. I know part of, part of what I want part of you to explore is how to find new themes. But uh, if that is a challenge, I also know for the future, maybe to send that out just to make sure everyone is able to locate and use those themes that exactly the ones that we're using. Okay, so I'm happy you're able to find electric. Maybe you have a lot of uh, slides there. Um, okay. Okay. All right, is there uh, any other questions? I know we, we still have uh, 15 participants right now. Um, I guess I'll, I'll stick around. 
You're very welcome, Jack. Hope you enjoyed the class. Um, I'll stick around till till 10 o'clock or until I'm the only one left here. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you, have a good night. Okay. Okay, have a wonderful evening and I will see you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so Hani, you have a question there. You're playing around with the layouts. So, so I like to hear people are practicing, playing around with this stuff. Um, so yes, actually, um, you're talking about the third, um, the third slide or actually both of them, but um, yeah, it defaults. However, you could go ahead and what you do is you just, um, See, there you go. That's one way to do it. Okay, one way is to just add more bullets, but there's an easier way to do it. Let me show you. Um, if you select on your smart art, okay, and you go to design, you will have an add shape here. This add shape button. So add shape after. There, you could add as many bullets as you want. And what will happen is the more that you add, obviously, the smaller the font will be, but it will constantly be readjusting the format so it is in line with the design. So yes, you have all these create graphic options by design where you could add bullets and you could add shapes in addition. So yes, it, pre, it defaults to three, but you could add as many as you want. And to delete, it's just the same, I just select on it and I delete and then I readjust it. Okay, so Linda, you want me to show you the conversion? Absolutely. So here's the thing. Again, here, let me go like this. Um, Let me, give me a second. I'm just thinking for a second how to, because most of all our text is already converted. Okay, so let's take, let's do a new slide here. Okay. I'm just trying to think. Um, you know what? Let's go like this. Okay, I'll show you like this. Let me do insert here. I'm gonna change the layout. What I wanna do is I wanna do title and content, okay? So I'm gonna do a title and content here. I'm just gonna copy and paste some text real quick. Um, so I'm just gonna take this text here. Because the reason why I wanna show you this because once you've already converted your text to smart art, you don't have that option to convert it anymore because it's already been done. So I just wanna show you from scratch. Okay, so if you see here, change that font. Uh, let's do the white. Okay, so here I have this font here and now I want it to be smart art, okay? So I'm gonna highlight it. Now, if I go to home, this button here, you see this button now is active. When I, when I click away, it's not active. But when I click on this, that button becomes 
active. Now, I'm gonna highlight this, I'm gonna to convert to smart art. Now, what it will do is, regardless of what I, let's select this, it automatically will convert that into smart art, and then I get all my smart art options. So now, if I go back to home, that button to convert is no longer available anymore because it has already been converted. Okay, Linda, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to click on the uh, question, answer live, but I hope you caught that. Um, so once you convert it, once you take regular text and convert it to smart art, that conversion is not available anymore, but the design and format now you could change that style. I hope that answers your question. Um, so Hani, to your question, you don't actually have to make the smart art by adding more bullets. You could do it either or. If you have more bullets, oh, now I understand your question. Let's say you, is your question, I guess, if you had, let's say four bullets, because when you're looking at your smart art, you only have three bullets, but you have six bullets. It will adjust automatically. So I guess probably practically speaking, if you look at the smart art designs, the three, I guess, takes up the, the, the least amount of room. Um, but obviously, um, it could be as many as options as you have. So it will just be dynamic in that sense. Okay, I think that is a wrap. Thank you very much once again for participating. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save because I did spend a lot of work on this. And I wish everyone a wonderful evening and I will see you Wednesday night. All the best, have a good night. Okay, have a good night.